Hi everyone, my name is Isabel. I've been a violinist since I was about 10 years old and I wanted to take the time to share uh, with you a little bit about the overview of playing the violin. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, this shouldn't be a very long video, but I just want to share that what I usually share with my students, um, which is it's never too late to start. Um, I don't care if you're 5 or 55 or 85, uh, you can definitely learn the violin. Uh, they do say it's one of the hardest instruments to learn, however, everything you can learn with practice. If you love it, learn it. If you don't love it, I wouldn't suggest learning it. If the sound of the violin kind of sounds like a, a cat uh, screeching to you, then it's probably not the best instrument for you to be um, learning. However, if hearing a violin makes you feel just happy inside and like you just want to keep listening to more and more of it, then I definitely suggest um, getting a violin. So there's multiple ways you can get a violin. You don't have to go out and buy one. You can rent one. Um, you can rent one online. Um, you can rent one um, from your local music store. I would recommend your local music store because it's um, you can go in and test it out and make sure you have the right size. Um, if you're a full grown adult, you will have a full size violin, um, most likely. But if you're a little smaller or younger, um, you might end up with a three quarter size, a half size. Uh, you can even have a one quarter size when you're really, really little. Um, so I have a full quarter, a full size violin, um, and this violin is made in China. It's a factory violin. It's not anything too special, but I've had it um, for about 15 years, and I went through college on it, majored in music, and have played weddings and taught lessons since then uh, using this violin, and played in orchestras, and gone to music camps and all kinds of things. So I think that having a good violin is important, but even at this stage in my life, um, I have another career and I'm not full-time focused on the violin. I'm not saving um, all my money for, uh, for a new violin or putting, um, putting a loan together for a new violin. I could, and I'd like to get a new violin. A new violin would be probably Mm, a good one for me would be $10,000 next level. Um, this one was about $800, um, and you know, the next step would be about $5,000, but I think if I'm going to go to the effort of buying a new violin, I want it for life, and I'd probably go the next step up um, and get a German-made violin or Italian-made, um, you know, a handmade violin. But I love this violin, it's been with me for quite a while and it's a, it's a good violin. Um, so what really matters if you do get a violin that is not um, at the quality that you really want, uh, there's a lot of ways that you can um, improve your sound, mainly two ways. So one is get better strings. So I do splurge a little bit more on my strings. So a good, really good um, set of strings can cost you about $100. Um, Sometimes you can get a gold E string that has a really nice uh, clear sound. Um, you can get um, either carbon fiber or regular strings. I usually just get the regular gut strings. So yes, they are gut and I won't go into that. Um, but anyway, then another good tip if you are in an apartment community or if you live with your family or your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, and you don't want to be super loud, um, you can get a, for a few dollars, you can get a mute, and it's just this little black thing. You can get it uh, online or at any music store, and it just goes over your bridge like this. Um, there's like two little like inserts, and you just push it through your A and D strings, and then you sit it on top of your bridge. So that works really well. Another thing I did for my violin to make it more comfortable is most chin rests um, do not have this area that goes over the tailpiece. Most are just um, like this rounded chin piece. If you just have the rounded chin piece, if you're like me, you'll find that very uncomfortable because 
where the sharp edge comes off is like hitting your chin and you'll get this like really harsh, um, kind of like a little callus here. Like I already have it, not as much anymore because I don't practice as much. Um, but if you do practice a lot and you don't have this, even with this, you'll get it. But this helps getting a different chin rest that has this more smooth um, rest that actually comes over the tailpiece. Another thing I did just to make my violin more comfortable is you'll often see shoulder rests that are like on pegs and you attach it and they're always falling off and they're like too high for me and it feels like the violin is like here and your chin is like here and it just doesn't feel right. So what I got is a blow up chin rest or shoulder rest. Um, so how this works is you can inflate it to your heart's desire. It doesn't inflate that much, but you just um, kind of take it out like an inner tube or whatever <laughs> else you inflate and blow it up and it's nice and cushy and it feels really good against the, the shoulder. The other thing I noticed with the uh, shoulder rest, um, your collarbone is right here and it would like dig in there. So you're digging in here, you're digging in there and both those things um, made me really not want to practice the violin. So whatever you can do to make yourself a little more comfortable, so you actually do want to practice without it being a pain, uh, is what you're going to want to do. Um, so I want to talk to you about my bow as well. So my bow is Pernambuco wood, and this is a, a Brazilian wood. My bow was about 500 bucks. Um, I got it when I was about 14. Um, and it's made in Brazil. It actually has a nice uh, mother of pearl down here at the frog. This is the frog, this is the tip of the bow. And uh, nice horse hair. I've had it repaired a few times since I've had it. That just means like these hairs will start to get too thin because they will eventually kind of fall out if you practice a lot um, or just get worn over time. It's probably time for me to actually redo that. And uh, this bow is really good because a lot of bows, they're really heavy at the frog and very light at the tip. So when you're playing, um, you're gonna have this weird imbalance and your hand gets uncomfortable and you're gonna end up playing way too much at the tip and it's gonna be really hard to play the frog. Uh, this bow has a lot better balance. So when I hold it like this, I don't feel like, oh man, that's like so heavy when it's up here. So that's one thing I really like about this bow is you can go from frog to frog, <laughs> frog to tip and not feel like you're imbalanced. So let me talk to you um, a little bit about the parts of the violin and basically what the violin is. So we'll assume if you do want to move forward with lessons, um, you'll go, you'll find yourself a violin, you'll find yourself a de decent bow, um, you'll find yourself your chin rest, shoulder rest situation, um, which even if you're running it, it is worth it to, to invest in, in good ones of those. Um, you'll also need a music stand behind me and your uh, rental or your uh, violin that you buy will have a case. So your case will be important to um, just put your violin away at night. You don't have to put your violin away every night. I mean, if you're in a home by yourself or, you know, living with other adults and you're not worried about a cat or dog getting on it or a child, then you can leave it out at night. But I recommend um, putting it away. And every time you, um, with your bow, you want to loosen the hairs. So basically all you do is you go um, clockwise. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, <laughs> just like you do for a screw in the house or your hose or anything else. Um, so you go, you go left to, or, yeah, oh my gosh, <laughs> you go left, what, what did I just say, you go, you go, <laughs> you go right to loosen it, actually, oh, that's why I always get confused with the hose. <laughs> It's actually opposite. So you go left to tighten your violin. <laughs> and you go right, if you're looking at your bow, you go clockwise to loosen it and you go counterclockwise 
to tighten it. So don't get confused with this in your hose. Um, so looking over the parts of the violin, this is our scroll. These are our pegs. Our pegs are used to tune the violin. These are our strings. And the strings are from, if you hold the violin up, the one closest to your ear is going to be G. That's the lowest string, G. Next one is D. Next one is A. Next one is E. Not totally in tune. And to remember that, um, good dogs always eat. Yeah, it's kind of boring, but it helps remember uh, when you're first getting into it. And then you have your bridge. Uh, you want to make sure your bridge is pretty um, like straight. If it's like leaning too much this way or leaning too much that way, um, that's not good. So you can just kind of play with it a little bit. This is your tailpiece and your chin rest. And these are the F holes. Uh, and basically how you make sound is your bow is drawing over and the sound reverberates in and then comes out through these holes. So they look really pretty, but it's also um, physics. So other things that you're gonna need when you first get your violin. So you got your violin, your chin rest, your shoulder rest, your bow. Okay, your case, your music stand. A couple other things. You also are gonna need your cleaning cloth. You just get a nice, um, you can use a microfiber cloth, it really doesn't matter. I got this one from Char. Char products uh, is kind of a go-to in the string world. They have everything that you need. Um, so if you want to have a little bit more assurance than just buying the first thing you see on Amazon, I would definitely go to Char and uh, pick up your violin supplies. So this is used every time you play your violin and your bow. Remember, don't touch your hairs on your bow with your finger pads because your fingers have oil on them and it doesn't go with the horse hair. This is horse hair. Very neat. You're going to want to just uh, cleanse, not cleanse, just like brush off the um, rosin, which we'll get to in a minute. And brush off the rosin on your strings. It's going to make a weird noise if you have a lot of rosin buildup, but just kind of go up and down. Brush off the wood, off the chin rest. If you don't brush off this and you like wear makeup, um, you'll get this really weird buildup that you don't want on your chin rest. It's gross and your violin teacher will be like, ew, I have to tune that and it's all like icky. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep your instrument nice and clean. Okay. Um, the other thing you need is a tuner. So the tuner, um, you can, you don't need this. So I should rephrase that. You want to have it, you don't need it. Um, how this works is you turn it on and it's going to show you like what you're tuned to. I'm at 435. Usually in a, as a violinist, you want it like 440. That's what orchestra's tuned to, um, which you can see over here. <laughs> And then when you're on a certain note, um, it'll show like in the middle if you're playing that note or not. So let me try to explain that. So you can see, I think, what it shows here. So it's 440. And I'm gonna first play my A, okay? So playing my A. Okay, I can't see well enough, but what it's showing, it's actually perfect. See the line? It's like right in the middle. So my A is actually in really good tune. So the A is the first one you tune, and then you tune your E with the A, and you probably um, want a fine tuner usually to do that. It's just easier. And then A and D. I want you to see how I'm doing this with my hand. Um, the thing 
is I can't really teach how to tune without um, being there with you, but you pretty much use your thumb to hold the instrument and then you use the other finger other fingers to slightly adjust the pegs. It definitely takes some practice, so be patient. Um, but this is the setup that you want. You want that nice grip with your thumb, not grip, but holding it firmly with your thumb, and then tuning with your other fingers. So those are the basics of what you need. Um, oh, like I was saying, if you don't want to get this, this is about thirty dollars. Uh, Korg also ordered off Shaw. Um, you can instead um, just use an app on your phone. So you can download an app called Tuner and it just plays like a monotone A and hopefully you are not toned up. If you are, you can still play, but it's going to be a little hard for you. Um, you'll hear the A and you'll just tune your A to that A um, based on listening to it. So that works as well. So. If you want to play the violin, you can. Um, it's going to be hard without a teacher, uh, especially in this in this day and age with not many teachers doing in-home lessons right now. But it can be done. Um, I just I worry about new students um, in the past six months that are not getting teachers or not able to start playing or not able to continue their hands-on lessons. Um, and it is distressing because I know a lot of musicians are struggling um, and a lot of our next generation is struggling to, to develop their musical abilities. But I also see the positives. I see so many people doing things online and getting out there and putting themselves out there um, just for the good of helping each other and giving back uh, based on what what we know and what we've learned from those in-person teachers and in-person orchestras and everything that we do as a group in person. So while I know this can't compare to a physical lesson, I hope this was a good introduction to the violin and uh, just please leave me any comments and I will try to do more of these um, and kind of next time get into some basics of the technique um, and actually start playing. So this is number one of uh, Violin Basics and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks and take care.